Welcome back. It's time for Off the Press. And I have my guest, Jida Johnson, Chief Lecturer, mm -hmm. Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos State, joining us. Good morning, Mr. Jida Johnson. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. And good day to have you us all over the world. Yes, it's always a pleasure to have you. So I'll just take care of the, all the headlines and then we'll begin to dissect them one after the other. We start with the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with DMO worries over low revenue as Nigeria's debt nears 81 trillion naira. Riders there, FG's 10 trillion naira revenue can't support fresh borrowing. That's according to DMO. Government to issue promissory note as judgment debt nears 3 trillion naira. That's the lead headline on the Punch newspaper. And then you have Paris Summit, subsidy removal, FX policy needed for survival, says Tinubu. In front of the Punch newspaper there, you can see the president um, with uh, the president Emmanuel Macron of France and his wife there he went for a, a summit in France and um, that picture was taken above the masthead on the punch newspaper I have FG states LG's share 786 billion naira May revenue details of that is on page 24 of the punch newspaper labor discourse on collision course over electricity tariff hike details of that is on page two and then terrorism planning attacks on religious fund centers dss ones details of that on page 28 of the punch newspaper All right, that's the much I'll be taking from the Punch newspaper. I'll move over to the next, which is Business Day newspaper. Business Day newspaper leads with petrol marketers, regulator, see merger as competition begins. Petrol marketers, regulator, see mergers as competition begins. And then on top of that, you have FMCG firm's profit margin drops to 10-year low. MTN demands board meeting overripped with IHS. And there is an explainer there from Business Day how Nigeria can curb crude oil theft. We'll move from Business Day newspaper to Nature News. Nature News leads with Macron's summit. World leaders seek debt solutions and innovative funding for climate action. There again, you see the picture of President Tinubu with Pres uh, President Macron of France and his wife. Looking uh, very excited and uh, laughing. That's a happy picture. Um, you have UDE unveil agricultural development scheme in Ebony State to boost food security. Lobby stars set to acquire talented forward from Doma United. Bio and energy green FG to produce bioethanol fuel from cassava. We had talked about this some years back. I wonder what happened to it. We're going back to it. Um, FG to produce bioethanol from cassava. And then we'll go to the Guardian newspaper. You have Flood of Fury. No respite for Bayelsa, Kogi, Rivers, 30 others ahead of another cloudburst. It's the big story of the Guardian newspaper. And details of that can be found on pages 4 and 5 of the Guardian newspaper. And going down from that, you have, again, NNPC fails to remit as Federation shares 786 billion naira for May. 
again, NNPC fails to remit as Federation shares 786 billion Naira for May. It's no longer business as usual in Nigeria. Tinubu rallies investors. Missing Titanic sub suffered catastrophic implosion. Passengers dead. That's a very sad news. Uh, they've been searching for this submarine for for days, and finally, uh, this 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 outcome, very sad outcome. Among the passengers were a father and her and his son. So that is a very tragic, very tragic incident there. Forensic expert claims INEC deleted results on Beaver's machine. <laughs> All right. Details of that on page three. Forensic expert claims INEC deleted results on Beaver's machine. That's coming from the tribunal, the court. And then going down, you have 20% doctors. 33% nurses diagnosed inaccurately. Federal government hints. <laughs> that, I think, is the most alarming news of all the news this morning. And details of that is on page 7. 20% of doctors, 33% of nurses diagnosed inaccurately. Federal government hints. And then uh, finally, NLC cautions government against increasing electricity tariff. All right, so it's time for me to, to discuss with my analyst, Mr. Judith Johnson, Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning again to you, Mr. Johnson. You, you listen to the headlines there. But I, I think we should start with this uh, piece of news from the Guardian newspaper. 20% of doctors, 33% of nurses diagnosed inaccurately. And that's coming from the federal government. Now, that's, that, that's, that should not be shocking to anybody because the major cause, the major um, causes of death is wrong diagnosis globally. Um, it's wrong diagnosis globally. Even um, the 2020... Um, corona, coronavirus, the global pandemic, uh, you've seen different reports coming out talking about the efficacy or non-efficacy of, of the vaccines that we were made to take and then the side effect, the hidden side effect of the vaccine. So when the um, federal government came with this report of wrong diagnosis, uh, wrong diagnosis is a major cause of death. In, in the in the medical in the medical industry, you know, when a doctor makes a mistake, the mistake or nurse or nurses when they make mistakes, their mistakes are in the grave, and you can't go to the grave and go and ask um, someone in the grave and to come and explain what was the major reason of his or her death. Mm. And besides that, you know, doctors always also cover for themselves. It's an industry. It's an industry norm for them to cover for themselves. I, I, I can say for a fact because I, I, I almost practically lived in the hospital for about, for about two, two years between 2017 and 2019. And I witnessed first and, and I came back from the hospital because my wife was, was admitted then. And then when she was, when she was running through uh, treatment for, 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 for cancer, for, Cancer of the bladder. So I knew what happened. I came out and I told people that if I, as a journalist, as a trainer of journalists, if I write what I experienced first and um, I'll set the world on fire um, of, of what of what really happened, of how lack of attention to details, carelessness in human treatment, um, the desire to make money and exploit. The family of the patient, all of that. So when the government we will hear the report, you will not see anything come out of such report. So it's not surprising to me because first and I have I have seen it. 
And uh, I've, I've seen, I'm seeing it, let me say it loud and clear. I've seen medical personnel accusing one another hmm. while they were walking away that you know you've killed that person. God. You've killed that person. It was out of your mistake. And then... And without, the person cannot come um, back. The person yeah, cannot the person come, cannot come but, back. But when, you say world, that, when you say worldwide, when you say globally, uh, you're, you, 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 you're saying it's, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. It's not peculiar. It's not peculiar to Nigeria alone. However, if if out of your negligence something of that nature happens and it is discovered, there are consequences. The challenge we have in Nigeria is that there are no consequences for bad action. There are no consequences for negligence. There are no consequences for decision. Rather, the consequences for bad decision and bad action is is a reward system. It's elevation and You've seen it left, right, and center in a national life, where uh, you look at the story where um, the debt management office is saying that as a result of low revenue, Nigeria can no longer um, service, uh, can no longer take loan to service to service the, the budget. Mm. The question you need to ask is, what are the what was the debt management office responsible for in the first instance? Mm -hmm. How many flags did they raise in the last eight years? Mm -hmm when the Bari administration was busy collecting loans left, right, and center, mm -hmm. how many flags did they raise? We put people in position of authority we, to be the, 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 the eyes and the ears of the people to ensure that there is due diligence and compliance with laid down rules and procedure so that there are no abuses of office and privileges. But what do you have for it? So when you have abuses in the medical industry, it leads to death. Now, you could have a remedy for abuses of an engineer, probably a breach had a default. Or sometimes, sometimes it will lead to death. Let's talk about the collapse of building that we have seen. Yeah. The collapse of building we witnessed in, in, in Lagos in, 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 in 2019, in 2020, 2021, 2022. You know, in 2022 was left, right, and center. The collapse of, what have you heard of it? So this one, just like the building that collapsed in Ikoyi and various buildings that collapsed everywhere, you will just hear the stories will be flagged, nothing, there will be no consequences. Now, government is going ahead to destroy structures in Alaba and the rest of them. I ask the question, who are those that give approval such, so, for such buildings? Who are the engineers? There are engineers, there are structural engineers. There is a local, there is an engineer for that environment. There is, there is, there is a surveyor for that environment. There are people that the public have entrusted with responsibility for the safety of lives and property within the state. And the state pays them adequately. Now, what happened to licenses of such people? What happens to them? It's, it's, it's business, you might be shocked that the engineer in that environment will be elevated, will be promoted because he knew somebody somewhere. Uh, so the, the, the bottom line is that we don't, we reward, we reward, we reward, we reward, we reward, we reward failure. People don't feel consequences for, for the action. In other climes, such engineers, what will happen to such engineers? Such engineers will lose, will, do, will lose their license of practice. They will lose their license of practice. But that same engineer, that same structural builder and the rest of them, you still see them building, being awarded <laughs> contract to build buildings across the length and breadth of, of the country. So the bottom line is to hold people accountable, mm. holding people accountable. If you are given a responsibility, you must take actions to that your, your responsibility the word responsibility is the ability to respond, to respond to issues. So the opposite of responsibility is irresponsibility. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody is irresponsible, given an assignment by the state, you should face the consequence of his irresponsibility. Well, just yesterday, I learned that a governor in one of the northern states visited one of the hospitals, one of the government hospitals, unannounced, unscheduled, and he found that they have not been, there has not been electricity in that hospital for the past nine months. They were working with touch lights. And that's just one of many. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine that happening. You can imagine that, that happening. The nurses were seated over. outside. The doctors were seated outside because of fear of being bitten by mosquitoes. You know how it gets worse when there's no power to chase away the mosquitoes with fan and mm. AC. And that's been the and, condition and then, for nine months, even though there was a governor in that state before he took over. Uh, and, and then one of the things you see is that is the New York playbook. They will do that for, for the press. They will do that for PR. After 
after it's done that, what comes out of it? Mm. So the, be ready for a lot of playbook at the beginning of new administration. Mm. When new administration comes in, they do a lot of razzmatazz, they do a lot of window dressing and a lot of PR. What we want is decisive action. Yeah. Decisive action with respect to that. Who are those that are responsible to provide light? Who are those responsible that are meant to provide light? What is the budgetary allocation for that also with respect to electricity? I'm sure that the money allocated for that purpose is going to private coffers, but nobody will be held accountable with respect to that. Okay, before we leave the Guardian newspaper, again, NNPC fails to remit as Federation shares 786 billion Naira for the month of May. Now, uh, that's not news. That's the norm. You have state actors bigger and larger than, than the state. You have institutions within the state. You begin to question yourself what is really happening. And I think that we should adopt the NITEL approach. What was used for NITEL? Um, the deregulation of that sector brought about other players in the telco sector. And you recall when, when the new operators in the telco sectors first came, when they first came, it was, it, was, it was very, very expensive. It was very, very expensive for you to purchase a SIM and for you to even maintain your line, you even pay a line maintenance fee. However, as competition grows in that industry, what happened? Initially, when they came, they said per second billing was not possible. But when they came, uh, when one of the, when a truly local investor came into it, the, the whole conversation changed mm -hmm. and the whole conversation changed and the responsibility of government is just to regulate that business industry. I think that there is a need for us to do away with, with to use the Saudi Arabian model, to use the Brazilian model, the, the Saudi Arabian model, the Aramco and Petronas. They are, Petronas is Brazil, state-owned, but there's a lot of the, the investment with a lot of players in it. Aramco is for Saudi Arabia. Why can't we borrow a leave from this country, from, even from Venezuela as well, so that we have this yearly um, NNPC not uh, remitting money into the federation account, NNPC operating as on its own. I thought that the president will also have dissolved the management of the, of the, of the NNPC because they are the ones that manage the issue of first subsidy or no first subsidy. Uh, for Buhari's administration. And then if there's a budgetary allocation for first subsidy until June, the end of June this year, and then there was no money when the president came in, when he was sworn in May 29, all of them should have gone. They should have gone. So I, 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 the one for NNPC should not shock anybody, should yeah. not surprise anybody. What we need to do is for government to totally divest what is happening in NBC. Allow private regulator. We need to take government and out of it. We don't even know the amount of food we pump in a day. Now look at look at the figures they are giving us. They say we are consuming 67 or 61, 61 or 67 million of barrels where during the subsidy regime. Mm. Now you remove the subsidy regime, all of a sudden, the number of crude oil we consume daily reduce considerably. That's what fella called government magic. You what know, customs, customs and <clears throat> the NNPC have traded words over how much we control on a daily basis during that subsidy regime. And as yeah, you said, we, remember, we, we would have thought that... You remember, Colette Ahmed Ali went to and said that, no, 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 we are, there is no way we are consuming. We are consuming this amount of uh, fuel they said we consume daily. But like we said, we we'll just the playbook is we'll receive press statement, we'll see actions of government released late in the night, Everybody will digest it in the morning, and then two, three days later, another story will gloss over it, and then we continue. You we know, I saw, I saw a video of one of these um, Arab countries uh, that took a, a media, uh, a journalist into their engine room, so to speak, their system, to show how it was so set up in such a way that one drop of oil, one, drop of oil cannot disappear without it reflecting in the system. It was so beautifully done, so seamless. That's a, against what we have here, where you have oil theft, millions of barrels, that, 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 almost on a daily we hear of oil theft, diversion in this country. 
Our shock system seems to be very, well, we've grown our shock system as a people in this country. We've um, learned to absorb these shock, this, uh, shocking stories that we hear every day from different angles of our economy. But let me ask you, as one musician asked, because you have said, well, that's the way it's going to go. Nothing's going to come out of it. Shen, I like this, it go the day. And if that uh, is the situation, well, what hope is there for this country? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you said that um, they brought automation, they brought technology. You saw um, um, one non-state actor, I don't want to give you the benefit of mentioning his name, one non-state actor visited the president and he accused the military of being responsible for oil theft um, and nothing has come out of it. No panel was set up, no investigation and the rest is history. Two days later, the same, one week later, the same non-actor was, was brandishing AK-47, um, um, threatening some other groups, um, accusing him. So, as far as uh, this issue is concerned, as long as you don't bring about, you see, Zig Ziglar said, for you to do the same thing the same way and expect a different result, he said it's the beginning of insanity. What we need to do is for government to take its hand off it, that invest it, and regulate that particular industry. A private individual was able to establish a refinery 24 years under a democratic administration. None of the successive administration, either PDP or APC, succeeded one in having a turnaround maintenance of our refinery, two succeeded in, in, in building a, a new refinery. The refineries that, was, that, that were built between 76 and 1980 were the refineries we still have to date. Then you ask yourself this question, what is really wrong with us? But those in public office knew how to purchase new cars. They knew how to purchase new cars. They knew how to build new offices. They can budget money to build religious, religious, religious houses in National Assembly. They can budget money to buy them expensive cars. They can even propose to increase their salary by 114%. They can also add to the retinue of each they have. Yet, what provides the resources, what provides the needed revenue to run the state, they are like a dasical about it. They don't think out of it. And I've said it, it's just because um, the oil is there. If, 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 if the, the first criteria that you should use in public service is for you, if you offer yourself to serve us as our elected official, to be a governor, to be a president, is that how are you going to generate fund? What is your economic blueprint to solve our problem? How are you going to generate fund without putting tax body on Nigerians? Despite the fact that we make money and we make money from this, from this oil and gas sector, and people we, we collect a lot of debts. Let's talk about the tax burden on the citizenry. Mm -hmm. There's a particular story with respect to that. The tax body, the multiple taxes you pay, you pay income tax you pay VAT, you pay consumption tax. Now, they are thinking of, okay, they remove subsidy and then, and now the electricity, the discos want to increase electricity tariff. How many times did they, have, did they increase the electricity tariff in the last four years? Let's, let's last, talk about in the, the last, last four years. One year, the yes. number the of times, the number of times they, they, they've, they've increased the electricity tariff. So, you, you are muzzling the people. You took away First subsidy. What are the what are the palliatives? Do if you are not subsidizing it first, why don't you subsidize agriculture? There is no country that does not have one form of subsidy or the other. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no country that does not have one form of subsidy or or or, 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 or the other. In in civilized time, they have they have they have a welfare program for the needy and the vulnerable segment of the society. That's a subsidy. That's that's a subsidy. Mm -hmm. So. There is a need for government to look inward and look at what they need to do and, and then to plug the holes and hold people accountable. And that starts from the head. How the head manages his office. What number of retinue of age does he have? I saw the picture of the Senate president living, the visuals rather, of the Senate president living. Look at the retinue, mm. retinue of cars in his entourage. And then you are asking the people to make sacrifices. People that are elected, they are not. They are not ready to make any sacrifices. I, I, I get it. You see, yeah. 
Like, let me say, in local parlance, monkey they walk, baboon they chop, as then they talk out. So, you see, the, the more Nigerians see it, the more frustrated they are, the more hopeless they are about the situation. You and I, if we look at what we have done in terms of analysis in the last eight years, we have become paralyzed with those analyses. Because it is the same analysis, it is the same issue we keep recycling over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, petrol marketers regulator see mergers as competition begins. That's on Business Day newspaper. Still talking well, about the sector. Uh, that, that's a welcome development. Mm. It's a welcome development. Uh, because a lot of them were feeding fast. Uh, there are some that existed um, on on on, PG, on just on their letterhead, they have no office, they have no nothing, but they have contacts within government. So the a lot of the ones that sell contracts, uh, exactly. the ones that Those sell that contracts, <laughs> exactly. So, mm. so what they do, they just portfolio business. You mm. have a lot of portfolio business without any portfolio. Yes, with uh, with respect to their business. So there's no doubt that um, this shock. We just hope that the president will see it through, will follow through beyond removal of the subsidy, then there is the need for us to set a panel to investigate. Where did we get it wrong? Who are those that have made this country dry? If there's any need for them to make a reform, we should get a reform from them. If there's any need for us to recover our, our asset uh, from them, we should recover our asset from them. The people that have made money from this subsidy regime, they are not ghosts. They are human beings. You can track them. They gave us all manners, they took us through pain. You remember the pain of one single account? You remember the pain of opening your BVN and mm -hmm. the rest of it? That Mr. Jidus Dancing, can you hear us? With respect to putting Nigerians through the stress of getting their BVN, of opening, uh, of government having one single treasury account and the rest of it, yet we still see and talk about corruption in high places. Well, until the issues of personnel overhead and capital expenditure are properly addressed, Nigeria cannot stop borrowing. I'm taking you back to that headline uh, that you alluded to while you were talking about how um, the DMO, where were they when the last administration was borrowing endlessly and now they are giving us warnings. You talked about the Senate president you just saw and his retinue. Let's go back to that subject on the Punch newspaper. DMO worries over low revenue as Nigeria's debt nears 81 trillion naira. You've asked, where were they? Where were you they? And I, can, we borrow, can we borrow money to fund our lifestyle? Of course not. Government borrowed money to fund the lifestyles of public officials. You can't borrow money. You and I can't borrow money as citizen and as as. As, as employee, we can't borrow money to fund our lifestyle. We can't borrow money to buy cars. We can't borrow money to to to, to buy to buy expensive cars and a fleet of cars. What 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 did we witness in the last eight years? Even Nigeria was buying cars for the Nigerian Republic. Nigeria was building infrastructure into the Nigerian Republic, and then we lack infrastructure. Yeah, where was the debt management office? Where was the National Assembly? Where are other agencies of government that should hold government accountable? You see, all of this is because there's a new sheriff in town and people want to justify that, oh, okay, well, we are working. We are working. We don't want to be removed. You know, this is the season of removal and appointment of, of, of new of new heads of ministries, departments, and agencies of government. So they want to justify. I'm sure they must have planted this story to justify that there is an office that existed as debt management office. Look at the amount of money we borrowed. Look at how the National Assembly was just ratifying. And then they came and deceived Nigerians that we are borrowing money for that infrastructure. Lagos Ibadan Expressway, within the span of the eight years of the administration, and they had a super minister of works, a super minister of work, quote unquote, that is from Lagos. Yet the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The trunk A road, the first trunk A road in Nigeria. They have not been able to complete it. You know the amount of time, even, and natural resources we have lost as the result of travel time on that particular, on that particular, on that particular route. You know how many number of lives of people that have been lost as a result of accident through the through 
the narrowing of, of, of that space during construction. So it, it, it's not surprising to me when you have actors and players that are given responsibility to do and they fail to do that responsibility and they come, they use the platform of the media um, to project that they are doing something in order for them to be retained in the office or in order to suggest that they are working. Where was DFMO when they were just collecting this money left, right and centre? Where was DMO when the central bank was busy printing money? You remember the governor of the governor of Edo State warned that the CBN was busy printing money. That Nigeria was not making money. That CBN and they shut him down. Mm -hmm. He he made he he, 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 he clamored. And don't 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 forget that almost sixty percent, if not seventy percent, of those that worked with the last administration. We still be in this administration. There's no magic that, because the majority of them are in the civil service. So the majority of them are in the civil service, and at the same time, the majority of them are in the political class. The person that headed MPA that was that was unceremoniously removed as the MPA is now a special advisor. So this is it's just it's just it's just <laughs> well um you asked me a question. Shana, like this, you go the day. Mm. You don't see this time, I know. Now, wow. You don't they like you did before. Now, wow. All right, because <laughs> we'll soon be out of time for this segment. Let's quickly touch on labor discourse on collision course over electricity tariff hike. You know, the one for the electricity. Do we even have the electricity to show for it? Mm. And I've asked myself, have we truly... Um, privatize that sector, even though government is still holding on to the Jenkos and the Tiscos, no doubt about that, because there are three value chains, the generating company, the transmission company, and the, and distribution. the distribution company. The areas we have worked is the distribution, is the distribution company. If you listen to the argument, you see, they always justify to you that it is what they buy that they also sell back to, to, to the public. So in the idea, when the, when the Tiscos, if you understand the value chain within this industry, when the Tiscos increases the tariff is as a result of what they've gotten from the Jenkos and the Tiscos. However, the question we need to ask is that, have we truly privatized that sector? Have we made the needed and the right investment in that sector? Have we replaced government monopoly with private monopoly? Those are the questions we need to ask with that sector. Because if you look at, if you use the prepaid meter, now you have removed fresh subsidy. You have removed uh, the electricity tariff has been increased over time. Now you are going to put 7.5 percent VAT on per liter of petroleum product. You have added it to each you, and then that 7.5 is on every part of my consumption. And don't don't. It's just a matter of time when this administration begins to build road. I'm sure they are going to they are going to put um 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 um, um toll toll on, on some of the roads they build because if you judge from the experiences in Lagos, I'm just, I, I might be wrong. And then that means that also you are a taxpayer, you pay your income taxes, then you pay your consumption taxes, and then you pay tariff on your electricity, and then you also pay toll on using the road. The question is, what is government giving back to you? That is a good question. I asked the same question when we were told that we should brace up for uh, the increase in, 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 in electricity tariff um, because subsidy will be removed from that sector. What, in what, what sector? Where is Nigeria? Where are Nigerians receiving some sort of subsidy? Just as you have said, every society subsidizes something for the people. We need to see something for Nigerians. Yes, economic reforms are inevitable, but you cannot do it in such a way that the citizens themselves begin to feel like life is being taken out of them and they, they're struggling to breathe. So before we go, yeah. let's, let's look at, let's look at uh, another headline uh, quickly. Still on the Punch newspaper. And that's from the DSS, a warning from them that terrorists are planning to attack uh, religious uh, centers and phone centers. The well, um, what, what was the essence of TSS? Who are those terrorists? You are they identified them, 
prevent it from happening. That's their core responsibility. They call responsibility warning to attack. They, they, should, they, should, they should just spot to action. We, the DSS should not be very active to arrest them. State, state, state official, quote unquote, that have that have that have run foul of whatever assignment they have given. The, the swiftness with which DSS move to to arrest public officials and the rest of it, they should use that swiftness to deal with is is the state security services system. So directorate of state security service. So what we secure the lives and property of Nigerians, they shouldn't heighten the fear. What they should do, they should work clandestinely and deal with that particular that particular issue. That's their core function. That's their core responsibility. Who are those that are involved? Those that are involved, they should take the steps to address that. And there's this particular story that I think we just need to touch briefly. It's the issue of the the the, the forensic expert talking about INEC deleting. Oh yes. The result. Thanks for taking the, me the there. Result. Thanks for taking me there. Yeah, the, the results of, 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 of the presidential election from mm -hmm. the Dibas March. If that is proven, it's just a witness account. If that is proven, I think that there is a need for us to have a conversation in this country, whether we want to practice democracy or not, whether we want, whether we want democracy to survive or not. Because if that could happen in 2023, what happens in 2027? What happens in 20, 2030? 30, 30, 31. These are pure conversations we must have for the sustenance of democracy. That's Some in addition to the fact a... that that's in addition to the fact that a witness had also said that there was no technical glitch on the day yeah. of the election. The people, people, people cannot take the sanctity. The elections is the sanctity of democratic society. Free and fair elections, and people shouldn't whoever that is responsible for that. I think there should be consequences and not a reward. There should be consequences for bad behavior. If that happens, it has thrown away the trust and confidence of the people in the democratic process. And anyone that truncates the democratic process, the basic word for it is treason. It's treasonable and felony offense. And we know the consequences for you to engage in treason. If it is proven and it is established by the court, that that actually happened. And I, I think that some people need to go, go to jail so that we make an example of it, so that um, the, 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 the people confidence in the democratic process, in free and fair elections, in which the people themselves, on their own, freely and willingly elect their representative, who they can hold accountable. And whoever is elected through a free and fair process understands that the mandate he gets comes directly from from the people, and it comes from God. Verse, there's, 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 there's a Latin word, verse publicly, verse the, the voice of the people is the voice of God. If we don't have that, then you are, not, you are working contrary to the plans and purpose of God, because I can't imagine this. I've still not been able to recover from the shock mm -hmm. that there will be a deliberate attempt to delete, to delete such when there were assurances by, by the electoral body that nothing will tamper with the result. That's that's if that happens, that's that's manipulation, that's altering records. There is a lot of it's a high crime. Don't do it's just a high crime, and such uh, those that are involved should feel the consequences. Not to talk about the resources the nation devoted for that project. You know, the amount of money we spend every electoral cycle, the amount of money. I've said it. If we don't if you do embrace the value and the tenets of democratic society and the principle that guides democracy, then they should just share the money to every Nigerian, the one they use for the election. And then we allow the kings and the ballets and the rest of them will go back to monarchical, uh, communal style of governance. And every four, four years, the money for the election, we share it to all Nigerians. <laughs> and then we'll be good. Yeah, they are, you know, the people will not die. You know how many people that died during that election, mm. there have not been consequences for that. Those that perpetrated violence, there has not been consequences for that. Those that have promoted a speech, there have not been consequences consequences for that. So, what's the essence of doing election? Where yes, the, Mr. The, the integrity of the election is is challenged. Yeah, it's you know, I I, I laughed that. because you know, according to my people, now bad thing, bad thing they make person laugh, bad thing they do funny. You know, it's been said that. 
the petitioners and the defendants, they both know the truth. It is the judiciary that is on trial. So let's wait and see the outcome of all of this. And let's also wait and see whether there'll be a change in the way Nigeria is, being, is, is run. Because what we've seen over the years is, is just nothing to write home about. Nigerians are crying for help. Nigerians are crying for justice. Nigeria is bleeding. Thank you so much, yeah. Mr. Adida Johnson. It's a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. You too. Jida Johnson, Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Lagos State, has joined us on Off the Press to take a look at headlines on some national dailies. It is the Breakfast Friday Flex Edition on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back with our very first hot topic to take a look at the warning from the DM, DMO uh, saying that no more borrowing. But then the question is, where were they? We'll be back. <laughs>